Thanks for joining us again. Today we're going to talk about the gluteus maximus. We're going to assess for function. We're going to see if the gluteus maximus can actually contract. Um, can it actually develop enough internal force to pull the femur into extension or extension of the thigh at the hip joint. And we're first going to show the uh, kind of a traditional orthopedic test. It's called the Thomas test. And then we'll actually show another test um, to actually see can that muscle do uh, what it's supposed to do or what the anatomy books say it can do. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the Thomas test and we're going to look at range of motion there and basically try to look at both sides and kind of see the difference between the two sides and we're, we've already looked at it so we're going to look at or address that right side. We'll show that first. Okay, so let's do that. So you can see here you can see that femur is in line with or just below the table, okay? So uh, what you're seeing there is the brain is saying, I'm going to allow the femur to go into that position, but yet if you really look at it close, you can see that there's kind of an instability there as the femur goes into the position. So once we treat that gluteus maximus, we're going to see more range of motion there, and I will point out that we're actually looking at it in the opposite way because traditionally people would say, wow, that psoas major or that iliopsoas is tight and it's limiting the motion there. And what that's saying is ultimately is the brain doesn't want to allow the femur to go into that position at that joint. Okay, so we're going to see a change in that range of motion. Even though gravity is helping the femur to go into the position, once we treat the muscle, you're going to see that there's going to be better range of motion or better quality of motion, and the brain's basically saying, okay, I, I feel comfortable going into that new position or that new range of motion, and then, of course, that psoas major is going to relax, and the quality of motion is going to look a lot better at the actual joint, at the hip joint. Okay, so we're going to show you both sides now, so let's look at the other side. Okay. Great, and then we'll do the other side one more time. Good. Okay, great. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll go to the palpation. And just so you know where we're palpating here, you can see we're going to actually address right through here. So we're going to address the iliac crest. Uh, we're going to kind of go right down to that PSIS, and then from the PSIS, we're going to go right down to that PIIS. So we're going to cover this entire region. We'll drop onto the sacrum or the lateral sacrum, and we'll follow it down to the angle here. And then we want to address what's called the sacrotuberous ligament. So it's going to go from here over to the ischial tuberosity. So we're going to address that. And then we'll address where the gluteus maximus comes into the iliotibial band, and then ultimately over to the posterior femur here. So it'll be right in through here, and that landmark is called the uh, gluteal tuberosity. So it'll be right through here, maybe even a little bit farther. And then ultimately we'll follow the iliotibial band down to the knee. So that iliotibial band will cross the knee joint, and it will actually uh, attach to the tibia on what's called the gluteal tuberosity or the tibial plateau. And we'll show that when we get there, okay? So for now, we're gonna to go to the palpation. And I wanna first show you kind of a different test here. So we're gonna bring this leg down and we're just, in this position, we're just gonna see can that gluteus maximus contract and pull the thigh into extension, okay? So just a different way of looking to see can that muscle actually do what it's supposed to do. So we're going to have her do extension of the thigh at the hip. Okay, good. And you can see there that she has pretty good range of motion, but if you look at it real careful, there's a lot of motion of the femur, but there's not a lot of motion of the pelvis. And actually, if you look at it real close, you can see that the pelvis has to move in the transverse plane, so the pelvis is actually going in this direction prior to her lifting the femur. So if there was stability from above, 
you wouldn't see that. The femur would just move, it'd be a nice pure movement, and there wouldn't be any motion of the pelvis in this plane, which we would call the transverse plane. So we'll look at it one more time. So it's extension of the thigh at the hip joint. Good. And then just relax there. We're going to ask her to do extension here. Good. And you can see how she wanted to kind of come back to this plane or closer to this plane there. So that is a compensation as well. Okay. So we'll throw the bolster in there. And then we're going to go to palpation for the gluteus maximus. So first we're going to find that iliac crest, compress the tissue into that lateral posterior surface of the iliac crest and this can be pretty sensitive through here. So I'm going to do one more pass here on that iliac crest and this is pretty sensitive for her. You can see the muscle jumping there, that's actually normal for her, that actually, um, that's ha actually happened before when I've worked on her. You can see the muscle kind of firing there. Okay, so we're going to kind of angle down to that PS, I'm sorry, the PIIS from the PSIS. And even though this is sensitive for her, it actually feels really good um, because this is an area where there's a lot of inflammation just due to compensation. So then we're going to go drop off onto that lateral sacrum. So we're right where that PSIS meets the sacrum. Now I'm actually closer to where the PIIS meets the sacrum. Kind of had to get a sense of where I was there. So we're going to follow that down ultimately to that sacro tuberous ligament. So you can see I'm just compressing the tissue right on to the lateral sacrum and I'm going to bump into that sacro tuberous ligament here in a second. And when you feel the ligament, if you're not familiar with that ligament, it's actually going from the PSIS 
down to the ischial tuberosity. So where my finger is right here, it's actually that's the sacro tuberous ligament right there. So we're just going to try to get some pressure force right into there. And if you look at a cadaver, you'll actually see the majority of the fibers of the gluteus maximus are going right into that sacro tuberous ligament right there. So it's about two or three fingers width um, lateral on that sacro tuberous ligament. We'll actually fall it all the way down to the ischial tuberosity. See, I'm just, I went back, I kind of traced my way, kind of went back to where I was in the beginning, um, and now I'm going back down again to that ischial tuberosity. So we're going to fall it right into the posterior surface of that ischial tuberosity. So for her, the ischial tuberosity is right here and it's coming right into the ischial tuberosity right here and that can be sensitive for some people. Okay, so that should cover all the fibers that will actually attach to the ligament. And then we're going to go, I talked about that angle on the sacrum. So we're going to kind of come up into the sacrum there where it starts to angle in and ultimately where the coccyx would uh, begin. So it's always a good idea to try to stay perpendicular to the bone, compress the tissue right into the bone, and then you're doing circular friction, longitudinal friction, or even a transverse friction. Um, I tend to do a circular friction uh, I feel like I pick up a little bit more and I can be a little bit more specific with a circular friction. So you can see how I'm angling in towards that gluteal cleft on the sacrum. And of course it's ultimate, ultimately going to become the coccyx. So I'm going to stop about here and you could see that glute contract again and again that's common for her um, seen that before when I've done this with her but it's not something you'll see um, with everybody but it's nothing to be um, afraid of either okay so now we're going to go over to where the band, the iliotibial band actually meets the, or the, I'm sorry, the gluteus maximus actually meets the iliotibial band. And here you just basically are feeling for um, the tissue, so kind of where the muscle belly meets the band. And it basically you'll kind of, when you get in there, you'll kind of feel the difference. You want to feel the difference between the uh, muscle belly or the fibers of the gluteus maximus 
and the band itself. And again, we're just doing a circular friction. And for her, and this is true for a lot of people, you don't want to be afraid to you know, really get in there um, to get right on to those fibers where they're coming right into the band. And again, you can kind of see the muscle twitching there. And this is a sensitive area for her too, but again, it's it's a good thing in the sense that this is an area that really, really needs that work or this work. And you're starting to see a little bit more twitching as well. Okay, that was laughing, that wasn't twitching there, but definitely seeing more twitching. Okay, so you can see how I'm just following that tissue down as it attaches into the, or kind of meets the band. So now you can see how I've kind of dove a little deeper here to really get those fibers right where they come into that band. And that's important because you ultimately you're not going to be specific enough if you don't kind of feel for the tissue or those fibers as they come into the band. Okay, that's pretty good there. Get a couple more spots here and you can still kind of feel where that tissue is coming into the band. And of course, you can also imagine where the coccyx would end. And that kind of gives you an idea of where those fibers will end. Okay. So that should be pretty good through there. And then we're going to go over to the gluteal tuberosity. And you can always feel for the uh, trochanter or the top of the trochanter and if you're not sure how to do that just kind of rotate the femur and you'll feel for the top of the trochanter and then you just go right to the proximal posterior femur and you're going to feel where that tissue of the gluteus maximus comes on to the femur and then, of course, you just compress right into the back of that proximal femur. You're compressing the tissue right into that gluteal tuberosity. And then applying either a circular friction or a transverse friction. And then a lot of times you'll start to feel where the short head of the biceps femoris comes on of that gluteal tuberosity uh, from below as well. And then when you flex the leg at the uh, Flex the lower leg at the knee joint, a lot of times you can actually kind of rotate the femur under your finger and once you find a place that you like, just hold the femur in that position, kind of using the lower leg as a lever and you can kind of change the angle of your palpation which can be, can be effective because you have to imagine that the muscle's not just ending right at that gluteal tuberosity, it's probably wrapping around slightly. And of course we know it plays a role in the transverse plane.
just going to do one more spot for the gluteal tuberosity. Okay, so then we're going to go, we're going to have her turn over. We'll take the bolster out. Here, I just want to show you on the tibia here where we're going to be. So we're going to come right into the top of the lateral femur here. So the distal lateral femur. We're going to come in from the top and try to get the band as it comes right into this lateral epicondyle right through here. And then from there, we'll go right into the joint line and we'll kind of follow the iliotibial band right over to the anterior tibia here, so proximal anterior tibia. So we're going to be superior to the tibial tuberosity that's right here, but lateral to the quadricep ligament or tendon depending on how you learn it. So we're going to be right in through here. We're going to follow it all the way in from the joint line. Okay, so that's the next thing for the gluteus maximus. Okay, so we're going to go just feel for the tendon to start and you can see here that I'm just kind of going over it and we just fall it right into that lateral femur and I don't know if you can see this but right above my finger is the iliotibial band and right here is where it comes on to that femur. So I'm coming in from below it or posterior to it and then I'm going to apply a pressure kind of down or force down towards her foot. And this can be pretty sensitive. While you're sitting there you can probably feel it on yourself. It can be pretty sensitive right through here. Still haven't completely... There we go. So right in through here. And like I said, I'm going to put some pressure down towards her foot. And then I'll come right in from the side. Then ultimately we'll fall that, here's a good spot right here, we'll fall that right down to the joint line. So right where that tibia meets the femur. So I'm going right into the side of that. And that can be really sensitive, but I found it's really important to get into that joint line. And then we're going to fall that, like I said, right on to the tibia. And it's important that we don't miss any anything, so you can always go back and repalpate. We're going to fall that right over to the quad tendon or ligament. You can see it right there. So her tibial tuberosity is right here and the tendon or ligament is right in through there. So we want to get a pressure down onto the anterior surface of the tibia. And for her this feels really good. And you can see how I'm kind of following it back 
to the joint line and just changing my angles. So I'm kind of feeling the bone, trying to stay perpendicular to the bone, compressing that band right into the tibia. So it's really important that we get this attachment because if she goes out and runs or plays basketball or something like that, we want to make sure that that muscle is controlling that transverse plane motion, especially of the tibia. Okay, so that should be pretty good right through there. So we'll go back and do the assessment first. I'm just going to get in here with a thumb real quick to make sure the assessment goes well. So you can see I'm just pushing right down on the top of the tibia or that anterior surface of the tibia. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to go back to the test. So I'm going to have you turn over. bend the knee and then from here she's going to lift the thigh good and you can see how uh, the quality of motion was a lot better so we still had a lot of motion of the femur more than we actually did before it was easier and now you can see that that pelvis is moving in the sagittal plane so the, the pelvis is actually on the right, tilting anteriorly, or what we call flexion. So you see the femur move, and then the pelvis follows. So the femur is driving the pelvis, and that was something we didn't see before. So we'll look at it one more time. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I mean, it definitely could be better. The other thing we're seeing is the pelvis isn't rotating this way as much, which of course was a compensation, okay? And that's really important because if you're just coming in here and trying to passively just relax, if you passively try to lift the femur and you're trying to stretch the tissues on the front, say the hip flexors, and you somehow pin the pelvis down, okay, like with a seat belt or something, then you're not going to see the compensations that are naturally occurring. So when we actively have her do this, let's try it one more time, you can see how everything moves pretty nicely there. And then of course we can still see the compensation. So even though it's better than it was, that pelvis is still going this way, not as much as it was we can get more motion, we can improve the motion of that pelvis, which would come from um, the multifidus. Okay, so that's gonna be through here. But let's just look real quick here. So we'll take the femur and put it out here, and then we'll take advantage of the transverse plane here and have her lift here. Okay, and you can see how that's better too. She's not coming in as much or not trying to immediately rotate as much to get back to the sagittal plane. And of course you can see the pelvis move better as well. So let's try that Thomas test again. So we're gonna have you turn over and just scoot to the very edge of the table. Okay. And then we'll bring that right leg up when you're ready. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the left leg, sorry. Okay. okay, so when we look at that, you can see the motion there is I think it's a little bit better, but the quality of motion to get into the position is better. So let's switch. Okay. Okay, that motion's about the same, but watch when she brings her right leg down. Okay, the motion there is a little bit different. Okay, because now that glute is saying, wow, I can actually feel stability as I go into that position. Her range of motion is pretty good overall. But if you look at it real close, you can see that she doesn't have stability, especially on the right side. And this is just one muscle. There's other things that we would want to look at. Okay, thanks for joining us today.